So at Remedy, we began to ask ourselves, how could we build a healthcare system that would enable deep models and other innovations in healthcare to be deployed at the point of care seamlessly? And we came up with a couple of cornerstones of such a system. Um, first and foremost, whatever sort of deep model you wanted to deploy in this system should ideally be interpretable. Um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily trust a recommendation from a person if they couldn't explain why they made it, um, especially not in healthcare where decisions are life and death. Um, and the same thing should probably apply to any kind of computational model we have in healthcare. Um, moreover, we're going to need a lot of large, clean data sets to train these sorts of deep networks. Um, this is somewhat self-evident. Deep learning uh, methods are very data hungry. And if you don't have clean data, you're not going to get a good model. Um, and then on top of that, it should be pretty seamless and easy to actually deploy technology at the point of care. We don't want to have a long lead time between deploying a system, updating it, or even developing a new innovation in the lab and translating it to the point of care. So let's check in on the status quo of all of those thing, these things in the world as we see it today. Um, with regard to interpretable models, um, as I mentioned, it's uh, super important that uh, we have them. Uh, deep, deep networks can do uh, incredible things with regard to improving the accuracy of decision making. Um, but it's not so good if we can't understand why they're making the decisions they are. Um, some research groups have made some pretty incredible um, you know, steps towards this goal. Um, here's a method I'd like to talk about now called LIME, or Locally Interpretable Model Independent Explanations. Um, it's a really cool technique that essentially allows you to take a deep network and some data about it, and then figure out why, explain why it's making the predictions it does. Um, now, the, the core idea behind Lyme is that you can uh, essentially approximate locally the very, very complex um, decision boundary, decision manifold of a deep network with a very simple uh, linear model that uh, maintains far more interpretability than the highly complex uh, decision manifold of the network itself. And you can do this by taking a particular data point that you'd like to explain and systemically sampling other data points around that, fitting a linear model to those data, and then seeing uh, what the important parameters are in distinguishing one type of a, a prediction from another. So here's an example of this. Uh, we can take this image of a frog, um, and that frog holding a heart, and you put it through a classifier that uh, tries to essentially guess what the image is. And it might spit out that probability 0.54, it's a frog, it's a pretty safe guess. Um, probability 0.07, that it's a set of billiard balls. And probability 0.05, that it's a red balloon. And then we can break this image down into a set of super pixels and systemically obscure them, uh, training a, essentially permuting this data point, and then train a linear model on these new data to uh, come up with an understanding of what superpixels are relevant for a particular kind of prediction. And we find that the frog's face is particularly relevant uh, for the prediction that this is in fact a frog, that uh, the prediction that this is a billiard ball is largely uh, described by the existence of the frog's big orange eyeball, and that the heart that the frog is holding is a hot air balloon. So I can look at these now as uh, you know, a human and say, well, the frog's face is very consistent with my model of the world. I know that frogs, frogs have faces. They look like that. I can trust that first prediction. Um, and the same kind of thinking process can be applied to medical data. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty important that we understand how medical decisions are made. And um, this is highly portable uh, to that kind of a scenario. Uh, another really cool uh, method for model interpretability that the research community has given us is this idea of model distillation. It was really originally developed by uh, Jeff Hinton, Jeff Dean, and uh, Vishnals. Um, and, and basically, it allows you to take a very large, complicated deep model and distill it down to a far less complicated model, essentially trying to mimic the uh, decisions that the deep model makes. Now, this was originally done to take deep networks and then run them on small devices like phones and tablets, where you aren't necessarily afforded a lot of computational power or space, but we can use this to our advantage. And um, Jiping Shea's group out of uh, University of Washington has done some pretty cool work here with taking a large black black box deep model, training it on intensive care unit data, and then eventually distilling it down to a gradient boosted tree. 
Now, this gradient-boosted tree, a decision tree, is just inherently more interpretable than the original deep model. When it comes up with a prediction, you can trace essentially the path of reasoning or decision-making back through the model itself, figure out why it's making the predictions it does. That's pretty cool. So let's go and check in on the other two cornerstones of this kind of deep learning powered healthcare system I was talking about. Um, large clean data sets. What's the state of that in the current healthcare system? Well, if you talk to anybody who works with healthcare data, they'll tell you the same things time and time again. Data is highly siloed. It exists you know, narrowly within a single healthcare system or maybe in a, a single um, healthcare provider site. Um, that the data lacks standardization, uh, or good standardization at that. So even if you get access to a variety of these data silos, it's difficult to integrate it into one large data set. And finally, the data is just dirty, um, either due to systemic biases associated with the way the data is logged or just laziness toward that end. Um, it's difficult to get data that is actually clean and is a good representation of people's health. Now, oops. There. Let's talk about deploying technology at the point of care. What does that look like? If you talk to people who run enterprise SaaS companies that sell to the healthcare care system, they'll tell you that this is a, a nightmare as well. You have to take a lot of time to win over all the relevant decision makers within the organization, which is you know, oftentimes take, uh, takes upwards of a year. And then once you do that, you act oftentimes have to do boutique integrations with a particular healthcare system's data systems to roll out your technology. And it's even more difficult to continue uh, updating it and uh, deploy essentially a continuous integration process. So at Remedy, we started thinking, these are really the two big flaws of the healthcare system as we see it today. The research community is doing some phenomenal stuff with deep learning, um, and they're definitely moving in a direction that would enable us to deploy it uh, in healthcare. Um, but the healthcare system needs some updating. Um, and we view telemedicine as a really phenomenal vehicle to get toward this end. Telemedicine is the practice of providing remote healthcare um, through a, a digital means, essentially enabling a patient to Skype with a physician or do a video chat with a physician, or just message back and forth with a physician to get medical care. The AMA, American Medical Association, says that uh, you can treat about 70% of all doctor's office visits through this, um, uh, this method, telemedicine. And we think that it affords even more advantages. Um, you see, when you move the point of care to be digital, um, you can do all sorts of things associated with capturing data seamlessly at the point of care and also deploying technology at the point of care. Uh, when it's digital, you can do things like take an entire conversation with a physician, use NLP to pick out important points and push it into a medical record, or you can do things like deploy Remy, our virtual physician's assistant. Now, what Remy does is he can collect uh, highly granular data about a particular patient by asking them pointed, detailed, and thorough questions. For example, if I have a cough, Remy knows to ask me how long I've had the cough, what color uh, you know, sputum I'm coughing up, whether or not my shoulder hurts when I'm coughing, essentially collecting standardized, thorough, and uh, diagnostically relevant information about my, uh, the state of me as a patient. But Remy goes beyond that. Remy can capture information uh, in, in the intake, figuring out who I am, uh, figuring out my medical history. Remy can ask questions in the triage process and then eventually automatically follow up with me to get an idea of the outcome of the treatment that I had. Um, and this is pretty special here because this is enabling us as a company at Remedy to collect a data set that nobody else has. Um, so we can collect a very comprehensive data set associating the incoming patient state with the eventual outcomes associated with providing care, which is something that's going to allow us to build deep models and build phenomenal diagnostic systems for everything that happens in between. In other words, automated diagnosis and treatment plan design. This is something that really cannot be accomplished with dirty, siloed, and small data that exists in the healthcare system today. And we think that by tying this together and providing a platform that enables people to train deep models on this sort of comprehensive data and then deploy them at the point of care, we'll be able to create a system that, ena that enables innovation at a much more rapid pace in the current, uh, current system. The, the analogy I like to use is that the internet as it exists today has a set of, of protocols that enable anybody uh, you know, working from their dorm room, working from a research group, wherever it is, to take an innovation or an idea that they have and then deploy it to the whole world at scale.
And we'd like to create a healthcare system where any researcher, anybody working on a better diagnostic process, can pass it through regulatory approval, and then with the push of a button, deploy it to um, care sites around the world at scale and provide good for everybody, uh, all patients out there, in incredibly rapidly. Um, so that's it for my talk. I'd love to field some questions and invite my co-founder, Nikhil Baduma, up on stage. Thank you.